I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Combat Sports UK. I'm Taylor Collard here and it's delighted to be joined by number one ranked Octagon Flyweight, Aaron A.B. Aaron, how are you, mate? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, mate. I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very well, mate. Very well. As I say, I'm just freezing cold over here. Over here in Germany, I imagine it's the same up there in the uh, in the northwest. So, yeah, we're building up for Octagon uh, 52 in uh, Newcastle just towards the end of January, the 27th. You've got the uh, the fight there against Christopher Daniel. How are preparations going? How are you feeling? Kind of a couple of weeks out now. Uh, preparations going well. I, I feel good. You know. Uh, I'm always in the gym, so it's not like I've I've, I've had uh, any time off and needed to to get ready uh, or or anything. You know, I've, I've straight after the Garcia fight, I had a week off. I was back back training, preparing for whatever's next for me. It's almost uh, almost got to make sure I just peak and don't do too much all the mm-hmm. time. If you get me, but no, I feel like I'm in a good place, and and obviously the. The older I am, the more experienced I am, the more I get used to knowing when to pull back and at, at what time and everything. So I'm excited and looking forward to this one. Yeah, and speaking about that as well, kind of the break you had um, that week, you did, you did a fair bit of travelling. You are out in Cologne with um, with Corey and then um, yeah. over in Dublin with um, with Dakota Di Cheva. How, how were those experiences? They're great, you know. They're, 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 uh, they're both, both top people and, you know, Coaching's a big passion of mine. It's I've I've been coaching since you know I was I was fourteen, fifteen in 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 football, and then on to MMA from like the age of eighteen, and that's where I'm gonna end up in the future. So uh, you know, having those experiences is is always always great. You know, uh, it was Corey's first trip aboard. You know, fighting on on a show like Octagon, so it was great to experience that with him and obviously I've, I've been working with Dakota for a very long time and you know winning that that uh, PFL European tournament was something that she she deserves and uh, it was great to be on that that whole journey journey with with people like that and just just watch them grow and you know help them in, in a small way that I can. Yeah, and I mean, for you, it must, it must have been amazing experiencing two uh, fantastic performances. You know, Corey went through the fire a little bit. You know, when I, when I spoke to him, he was saying, um, you know, that he really, um, it was a really good performance from him as, uh, that he thought. And then obviously Dakota's performance was was masterful um, over over there in Dublin. I mean, how satisfying is it for you as a coach to kind of see everything come together like that for both both these guys? Uh, really satisfying from a, from a coaching perspective point of view just uh obviously you know nothing will ever be perfect and you'll never get that that position where you're happy with where where people are at uh but you you're always wanting them to grow and i feel like you know they've both both shown tremendous growth in their game and you know for Corey going from ukfc to to octagon in front of twenty thousand people in cologne and uh, getting a submission win uh, shows the work that he's been putting in. And, you know, it's a big focus of, like, obviously what he wanted to work and, and having, you know, Steve force him into into more grappling sessions was something he wasn't very happy with at the at the start of his uh, his journey with us. But, but you know, he, he got to show it and and show where he's improved and, and developed in in his MMA game. That's what I mean. It's, you know, with this sport, you can't just be one-dimensional now. Back in the day when it was striker v grappler has long gone. Uh, so it was great to see that. And, and you know, so shame with, uh, same with Dakota. She was levels above that uh, tournament uh, in, in terms of uh, skill set. And mindset, and I feel like uh, I'm excited for for the next challenge for her as well. Now, yeah, lots of really exciting things to come for um, for both fighters. We're going to chat um, you, me, and Corey in a little while, but let's let's jump back to you. I mean, reflecting on on, on the Manchester fight, I think uh, from my perspective, being cage side, the performance was excellent. 
obviously you kind of had the um, the stoppage with the with, with the cut. How do you evaluate the performance now? Kind of looking out a couple of months later. Again, I feel like like I'm 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 much more experienced now, and obviously coming to the back end of of my fighting career. But I look I look back at like my last probably five or six fights and I feel like I've been progressing and developing in all of them uh, you know after after being off for a couple of years through through the cancer journey I feel like since I've come back I've been getting better every one and I've got obviously a couple of uh, decision losses on there which you know I can still argue with to this day that should have maybe gone in my favour uh, and then now this one with the cut is going to go down as another as another loss in a, in a fight that I was feeling comfortable and felt like you know I was I was the better fighter and, and dominating in in all aspects you know again like I said earlier it's never the perfect performance and you're always looking to improve so there's bits I've been working on and looking to to develop from that fight that that we've picked up and uh, assessed. But I can't sit back on it and now say to you it was it was shit or you know I'm I'm, I'm look like uh, I'm done or anything far from it. I feel like I'm I'm getting to that stage where I'm I'm having the best performances and uh, I've just got to keep keep making sure that I improve and develop and progress at every one. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and like I said from K from K shot, it was a, it was an excellent performance up until the uh, the, the the stoppage. There. And we were talking obviously when I when I met you in Cologne about getting that that rematch back. Why do, why do you think that's not come about? Obviously, you were very, very game for it. You know, we were putting the feelers out there. From your perspective, why do you think it's not come around for, for this card? Uh, truthfully, I, I think he... I, I don't think we'll see him in a octagon uh, arena again. Mm. I feel like... I feel like he doesn't he doesn't want it. Uh, you know, I, I, I agreed that rematch... Before I seen you in Cologne, mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't confirmed on his side. And time went by, weeks went by, kept needing more time. We needed more time, and now he's just gone ghost and and uh, hasn't hasn't replied to 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 the fight or or said what's what's next for him. So, you know, maybe I'm just just looking on on the downside, and maybe he just wanted Christmas off. Uh, and he didn't want to. He didn't want to compete in January. But I'll be. I'll be surprised if he comes back and and you know fights, fights in, in Octagon again. Uh, I I would love him to. Like I said, I I want that rematch with him. Uh, he agreed to rematch verbally. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, but for me, the the way like like the way it was dealt with by him and his team just wasn't wasn't very professional either, you know, like I, I like I said, I think it was like November the 13th, I agreed to that rematch and it was just constantly waiting and waiting and then just nothing. And, you know, you're preparing over Christmas, taking time away from the family, not doing things that you would normally do, making sacrifices. And as a professional athlete, I would nev never do that to another professional. I would either just say, listen, this is a score, I'm out. Or I'm in. Uh, so again, why it didn't happen, I don't know. Uh, but I, and I could, you know, that's what I mean. I could have sat out and waited. But again, I'm not. To, I like to take things into my own control, and I can only control my performances, my training, and who I compete at. So wait around and fight in for the belt or make sure I go in there and, and, and take it myself and give myself the opportunity. So I didn't want to be in a position where I wait for him to come back if he did come back and they'd be like, oh, you need to fight, get a win under your belt before you fight for the belt again. So I just thought, I'd, you know, I'll, I'll go out there and compete. It's what I love doing. I'm a fighter. You know, I think this is my sixth fight in 11 months, mm -hmm. seventh in 14, 14 months. You know, there's probably a handful of people who have done that at the level I'm doing it. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do. 
yeah, and like you said, you're very much taking things in, into your own control and you've looked to get back in there. You're always talking about that January card straight after even the post-fight press conference in Manchester. So how important was it for you that, that you know, you got an appointment, you got Christopher Daniel and you had that, you had that date confirmed and you knew you'd be competing um, in Newcastle? It was it was it was important for me. Like I said, I don't want to be I don't want to be sitting around and not fighting. But also, it, it's important for Octagon. I feel uh, mm -hmm. you know they've they've been great to me, and we've we've now got a flyweight division, and we're doing big things, and they're really treating the fight as well. And you know. Coming up with this flyweight division, I don't want to make it stale and inactive, uh, which I feel like Garcia would have, would have been doing if he wanted to sit out on the sideline for six to eight months. So I do feel like it's also my responsibility to to keep this flyweight division going and, and keep it exciting and and keep the eyes on it for Octagon, you know, because they've they've never had a flyweight division before. Uh, so it's important that I carry it and carry it with with pride and, and promote it and bring out big performances, you know, from because I think flyweight's one of the most exciting divisions to watch. Uh, I know you people might say they like the big heavyweight knockouts, but you know, there's not many heavyweights that can go three five minutes or five five minutes at, at the pace that the flyweights can go and the technical levels of it. So. I feel like it was important for me, but also I feel the responsibility of, of doing that for the Octagon Flyweight division as well. And Christopher Daniel, what do we know about him? It's another American coming over. Um, how are you feeling kind of about him and his style? Well, I mean, what's your style? Do you tend to dive into your opponents and look at their styles or how do you tend to go about it? Yeah, like I said, that I'm a... Like a, I'm, a, I'm a coach as well, so yeah. I like to analyse before... Uh, analyze my opponents and see what I can look to exploit and what they maybe look to exploit on me. Uh, I do think it's a tough fight, but uh, everyone I'm fighting now is good. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think there'll be, there'll be areas in the fight that I'll be able to have an advantage on. He's, he's good at jujitsu, especially off his back. But if you look at my fights, I'm a, I'm a top game, uh, ground and pound and jujitsu guy myself. Uh, and every every fight starts on the feet, and I'm, I'm well rounded. He looks well rounded as well. But I feel like in mixed martial arts, I've got the the ability and the tactical knowledge as well to to find an area within the fight that I can win and exploit. And that's what I'll be looking to do from from that first second. You know, he's dangerous. He, uh, his, his striking looks looks dangerous as well. He's got some some flashy techniques, but and the and like I said, he's he's very active off his back. He's got a lot of submission wins off his back. But it's important that I stay switched on and 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 focused and and just find that route to victory. And like you said, like you're good top game. He's on the bottom. Do you kind of look at that and think, oh, I'd like to test myself in that area, kind of matching up our styles like that, or do you kind of think let's game plan it a little bit more sensibly, so to speak, or will you just look at it in the fight and kind of see what uh, opportunities present themselves? Uh, the competitor in me like wants to always go into their realm. Mm -hmm. uh, like even if I'm going against a striker and I'm comfortable uh, on the ground with them, the, like the competitor in me almost like wants to strike with them because it was like obviously I grew up a lot watching GSP and you know you'd expect them to go for the takedown and he'd end up out striking strikers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's the competitor in me. Obviously, I, I'll be game planning with my. With my coaches, but I feel like with this one, obviously, I'm a top top game guy. He's a bottom game guy, so I feel like we're going to end up in those positions, and it's almost who's better at their own game. Uh, and I feel like obviously it's mixed martial arts fight. It's not jujitsu. Strikes mm -hmm. are involved, and and being on the bottom is is uh, not as advantageous as it would be in a in a jujitsu grappling match. And I'm. Hoping I can, I can do that on the on the night. Obviously, I've got to respect the submission game on the bottom and, and his striking as well. But you know, I'll be looking at, on the night to to you know see who's got the better game. Yeah, it sounds like a really fun um, clash of styles, and you, and you seem very much game for 
for getting involved in it and, uh, and testing yourself. And when you look at the landscape of Octagon now, you talked about that flyweight division and how important it is for you to build that up. You know, with the uncertainty around Elias, do you kind of see this as this is this is the fight for the for the top of the pack, so to speak? Um, how do you kind of see the division playing out and then building it further on? I feel like I, I'm the real champ and I'm defending my belt. There we go. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, uh, that that's like obviously everyone I speak to, and it's just such a shame that the Elias Garcia fight isn't isn't going ahead. You know, like you said, I was in PFL, I was in Cologne. Germany and everyone's coming up to me asking me about that fight. Yeah. Like, is the rematch happening? Is the rematch has got to happen? You know, people like Dan Hardy. Wow. You know, UFC legends coming up to me saying, he watched the fight, you need that rematch. And uh, it's a shame it's not going ahead. But like I said, I can't, I've got to focus on the things in my control. Uh, mm -hmm. And I am number one ranked flyweight in, in Octagon. Uh, so at the moment, I'm, I'm defending that spot. I'm looking to to make sure if there's going to be a title fought for it's 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 me at one side of that bracket. Uh, that that's how I'm thinking. Amazing. And um, just just before we finish it up, I'd like to kind of you hear um, about martial arts changing a lot of people's lives, kind of more taking them off the streets. But for you, I feel like martial arts has played a very different role in your life or through your rehab with with cancer and everything like that. So just talk about the role. The martial arts in particular has played in your life and how it's kind of been different to, to other people's journeys, so to speak. I feel like uh, uh, life is like fighting. Mm. And fighting, which we call mixed martial arts, is like life. Uh, there's been there's been times in my life where I've used MMA to get me for, get me out of tough or dark situations. And there's been times in my life where I've used MMA to get me out of tough and dark situations. Uh, I always was, was told, show me the fighter, I'll show you the person. Show me the person, I'll show you the fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've been, you know, fighting's true. And uh, I feel like the way I fight in the cage is to express who I am as a person. I was... It's, a, it's an expression of me and the battles I've had to go through throughout my whole journey to, to come out the other end. That's why I'm like, when I fight, I'm forward, I'm pushing, I'll, I'll never be broken. Uh, I'm be up, down, left, right. I'm just keep going to go forward. And that's how I've had to be in life as well at, at times. So I feel like there's, there's nothing more real than fighting and there's nothing more real than life. So they just go hand in hand for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an incredible and an inspirational story all around. I'd like to throw over to you for, for any shout outs or any sponsors you want to make before we finish up here, Aaron. Uh, I just obviously want to always, always thank, thank my team and, uh, and coaches for, for supporting me on, on the journey and obviously my sponsors as well, because, you know, I'm fortunate to be surrounded by so many great people and, and without them, this would, wouldn't be possible. And, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always grateful for that. So thanks for asking me to to thank them because uh, because I, I really do appreciate. It. Yeah, amazing, and that, that that's um, a testament to, to to fighters, the game you have. Um, Aaron Abey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Number one ranked flyweight defending that spot, of, um, January twenty seventh at Octagon fifty two in Manchester. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Thanks for having me.